Have you ever wondered why the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers do not have catapults to launch aircraft? It's a question that takes us back to the early days of naval aviation. In the infancy of aviation, launching aircraft from ships was a daring experiment. Early attempts involved the use of modified gun mounts and flying off platforms. However, these methods had their limitations, especially as aircraft became larger and heavier. The solution came in the form of the catapult. The concept was simple, a device that could propel an aircraft off the deck of a ship, giving it the necessary speed to achieve liftoff. The first operational catapults were hydraulic, but these were soon replaced by the more powerful and reliable steam catapults in the mid-20th century. The steam catapult, a marvel of its time, revolutionized naval aviation. It operated on a simple principle, using steam pressure to drive a piston down a track pulling the aircraft along with it. This allowed even the heaviest of aircraft to be launched from the restricted space of an aircraft carrier's deck. Steam catapults became a standard feature on aircraft carriers, enabling naval fleets to carry powerful air wings, capable of projecting force far beyond the horizon. They played a pivotal role in many naval engagements throughout the late 20th century, from the Korean War to the Gulf War. However, the steam catapult is not without its drawbacks, it requires a significant amount of steam pressure, which can take time to build up. It's also subject to wear and tear, requiring regular maintenance. Despite these challenges, the steam catapult has remained a cornerstone of naval aviation for over 70 years. It's a testament to the ingenuity of those early pioneers who first dared to launch aircraft from the decks of ships. This historical background sets the stage for understanding why the Queen Elizabeth class carriers are designed differently. Now, let's delve into the specifics of the Queen Elizabeth class carriers and why they don't use catapults. The Queen Elizabeth class carriers, a pair of absolute behemoths in the Royal Navy's arsenal, are designed with a distinct purpose in mind. Instead of catapults, these carriers employ a short takeoff and vertical landing or stovel system. The reason, flexibility, cost, and the specific aircraft they carry. You see, the Queen Elizabeth class carriers were designed to carry the F-35B Lightning II aircraft. These aircraft are unique in their ability to take off from short runways and land vertically, much like a helicopter. This means that they don't require the assistance of a catapult to reach takeoff speed, nor do they need arresting wires to slow down upon landing. By opting for a Stovall system, the Queen Elizabeth class carriers have essentially optimized their design around the capabilities of the F-35B. This allows the carriers to maintain a high degree of operational flexibility, as they can launch and recover their aircraft in a wider range of conditions. But there's another factor at play here. Cost. The installation of catapult systems, whether they're steam-powered or electromagnetic, represents a significant financial investment. It's not just the initial installation that's costly either. The ongoing maintenance and operational costs can also add up quickly. Given the tight budget constraints often faced by the military, it's easy to see why the decision was made to forego catapults. In conclusion, the absence of catapults on the Queen Elizabeth class carriers is not a case of the designers forgetting to include them. Rather, it's a deliberate and strategic choice based on the specific needs and constraints of the Royal Navy. It's a decision that prioritizes flexibility, cost efficiency, and the specific capabilities of the F-35B aircraft. The absence of catapults in these carriers is a strategic choice, not a design oversight. But what about the differences between steam and electromagnetic catapults and their respective pros and cons? Steam catapults have been the standard for decades, utilizing high-pressure steam to thrust aircraft off the deck. They're robust and reliable, but they also have their drawbacks. They require substantial maintenance, their power can be inconsistent, and they're not particularly energy efficient. On the other hand, electromagnetic catapults, like those used in the latest Ford-class carriers, operate on a different principle. They use magnetic fields to propel aircraft, offering a smoother and more controlled launch. The benefits are clear. Less wear and tear on the aircraft, greater launch efficiency, and the potential for rapid succession launches. But these systems are not without their challenges. They're expensive, complex, and require significant power. The transition from steam to electromagnetic catapults isn't just about technology, it's about strategic needs and operational efficiency. The choice between steam and electromagnetic catapults depends on a range of factors, from cost to technical complexity to operational requirements. 
So, what are the chances that these catapults will be incorporated into the midlife refit of the Queen Elizabeth class carriers? Well, it's a topic that stirs much debate. Technologically speaking, retrofitting these carriers with catapults is feasible. Both steam and electromagnetic catapults have their merits and could, in theory, be integrated. From an operational perspective, catapults would allow the carriers to launch a broader range of aircraft, expanding their capabilities. However, this comes with an increased demand for training and maintenance, adding another layer of complexity to operations. Financially, the retrofit would be a significant investment. The cost of not only installing the catapults, but also the ongoing expenses for their operation and maintenance could be a deterrent. The decision ultimately depends on a balance of technological advancement, operational efficiency, and financial feasibility. While the incorporation of catapults into these carriers is technically possible, it remains to be seen whether it will be deemed necessary or desirable. In conclusion, let's recap what we've learned today. We dove into the history of catapults in naval aviation, a tale rich with innovation. We explored why the Queen Elizabeth class carriers currently lack catapults, a unique design choice. We then weighed the pros and cons of steam and electromagnetic catapults, each with their own merits and drawbacks. Lastly, we pondered the potential for future changes to these carriers. As technology and military requirements evolve, so too will the design of naval aircraft carriers. Whether that will include the addition of catapults to the Queen Elizabeth class carriers remains to be seen.